ok students today we shall be discussing physical properties of alkanes uh, these properties I shall not be discussing for the remaining chapters because these properties follow a similar trend in all the chapters so you can see here alkanes are almost non-polar why they are non-polar because they are compounds of carbon and hydrogen and the carbon carbon bond as you can understand it is the form bond formed between same atoms similar atoms so there is no difference in electronegativity so they are non-polar and the carbon hydrogen bonds the difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen is so very less that there is no charge separation and therefore the alkanes are non-polar in nature <coughs> They possess weak van der Waals forces and due to this carbon 1 to carbon 4 that is methane to butane they are gases because the force of attraction with which the molecules are held are very poor or very weak. Carbon 5 to carbon 17 they are intermolecular forces are little more stronger and they are liquids and beyond carbon 18 they are all solids but the nature of solid is they look like wax okay waxy solid. They don't have any color, they don't have any order, so we say they are colorless, orderless substances. This trend you will find in almost all the functional groups. First few members are usually gases. As the molar mass increases, they slowly turn to a liquid and finally they become solid. Uh, there are some functional groups where the very first member is a liquid because the force of attraction between the molecules are very strong. We shall be discussing this later. Then we move to a very important uh, physical property that is boiling point. You see if you look at this table you can see as I told you boiling point and uh, molar mass they are directly proportional. More is the molar mass more will be the boiling point. So let us have a look for methane. Methane molar mass 16 boiling point 111. Ethane molar mass increased 30 boiling point also increased 184.4 Kelvin. Propane 44. The molar mass increased further, so boiling point also increased further. So they usually follow a regular trend that boiling points are the more is the molar mass, more is the boiling point. But you see if the compounds are isomeric, that means they have same molecular formula. If they have same molecular formula, they have same molar mass also, you can check here 72, 72, 72, these three molecules. You can see these three molecules, they have same molar mass C5, H12, so they are isomers. So if they have same molar mass, should they have same boiling point? Please have a look here, you can see there is difference in boiling point. First one 309, second one 300.9, third one is 282.5. Now why is it so? To understand this, let us go to this uh, next page. You can see here, <coughs> if the compounds are isomers, molar mass will be same but boiling point is different because boiling point depends on area of contact between the molecules in liquid state. More is the area of contact, higher is the boiling point. For straight chain molecules, area of contact is large, so boiling point is higher. As branching increases, boiling point decreases. We try to understand with the help of an example. You see here I have uh, just tried to draw. If it is a linear molecule that is straight chain, the molecules will come very close to each other and the area of contact will be large. So the force of attraction between the molecules will be very large. So if you want to convert them to gas, boiling point means the temperature at which a liquid changes to a gas. So the boiling point will be high because you have to overcome the force of attraction among them. But if there is on already a branch, one or two branches, you can see the molecules cannot come very close to each other. So the area of contact becomes quite less. You can have a look here. The area of contact is less. As a result, the boiling points are less. Here it is linear. The molecules are very close to each other. So boiling point is high. Let us try to understand. You see this is pentane having molecular mass 72. All, I have taken the example of all C5H12, three isomers of C5H12. So you can see it is linear, so area of contact is large, so 309.1. The next isomer is 2-methylbutane, one branch is there, 
so boiling point decreased little bit now the third isomer is 2,2 dimethyl propane so there are two branches so the area of contact that is molecules cannot come very close to each other from any side so the area of contact becomes very less and boiling point decreases further this is a very very important property and very often in the exam they give you a series of compounds and ask you to arrange them in increasing order of or decreasing order of boiling point so please 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 remember for isomeric alkanes boiling point decreases with increase in branching so more is the branching less is going to be the boiling point so with this we come to the end of physical properties rest of the properties you can just have a look from the um, book or the note i have already the previous page now i will be discussing the chemical properties chemical properties means chemical reaction now there are many chemical reactions but i have not chosen all of them i have only chosen the ones which you will require for class 12 syllabus okay so here you see the first chemical property which you have discussed is halogenation or substitution reaction you will find in the note also there is a substitution reaction substitution you understand alkanes are saturated hydrocarbon that means all the carbon bo hydrogen bonds are single bond or there is no carbon carbon double or carbon carbon triple bonds so they are considered to be saturated so when something is saturated we cannot add anything to them rather what we can do we can remove one and replace it by something else such reactions are called substitution reaction yeah, in class 11 if you remember we have discussed the types of reaction so when alkanes are heated or exposed to sunlight together with halogen the halogens could be usually chlorine and bromine normally fluorine and iodines are not taken one or more hydrogen atoms of the alkane gets replaced by halogen successively so you can see the example methane when treated with chlorine in presence of if you heat it strongly or you expose it to sunlight and for sunlight what symbol we have used h nu from physics and from uh, chemistry also you know e equal to h nu where nu is the frequency of radiation that means of the sunlight and nu is uh, Planck's constant or it may be uv light uv light you know they are high energy radiations so out of four hydrogens here one of the hydrogen gets replaced one of the hydrogens from here get replaced and what we get here is ch3cl name of this compound is chloromethane commonly called methyl chloride now if you continue the reaction i have not written heat or light in uh, every equation but they are there so you can see out of three hydrogens now another hydrogen will be replaced and we shall be getting ch2 and one more chlorine will be added in that place i mean hydrogen will be substituted by chlorine so it is ch2 cl2 name of this compound is dichloromethane commonly called methylene chloride then we continue further remember as long as hydrogens are attached to the carbon the reaction will go keep on going so the third one is chcl3 that means i have replaced another hydrogen by chlorine and the new compound which is formed is called chloroform commonly and IUPAC name is trichloromethane and another step will continue because you see one more hydrogen is still left here and lastly we get CCL4 known as carbon tetrachloride commonly and IUPAC name is tetrachloromethane so that is substitution reaction I have shown you with methane the reaction is possible with ethane butane any other hydrocarbon the next reaction which we require that is combustion combustion means burning a hydrocarbon in presence of oxygen remember there is a difference between a combustion and oxidation in oxidation the alkanes are allowed to react with oxygen but not burnt okay that's why we call it controlled oxidation number three you can see controlled oxidation and um, or catalytic oxidation before going to this let us have a look here combustion now you see combustion may occur in three ways if you have sufficient supply of oxygen then they form both carbon and hydrogen they form their oxide so carbon forms carbon dioxide hydrogen forms water but if you have little less supply of oxygen limited supply of oxygen then carbon cannot form dioxide because you understand to form dioxide one carbon requires two oxygens so here since oxygen supply is less carbon forms carbon monoxide and hydrogen forms water 
then if you have too too much less of oxygen mm -hmm. insufficient supply of oxygen in that case you get soot of carbon the black soot sometimes you might have seen in the gas stoves and all when the gas cylinder is nearly coming to an end i mean getting over the containers or utensils which you are using for cooking the the soot black soot gets deposited at the bottom of the container or utensil so we get carbon and water so please remember if you are asked to write the reaction between hydrocarbons and oxygen if nothing is mentioned you have to consider that it is in excess oxygen this particular reaction methane and oxygen has been asked this year in class 12 board exam then in controlled oxidation you see depending on the catalyst taken the products formed will be different we we'll have a look here if you take if you take ethane and treat it with oxygen in presence of copper remember here we are not burning ethane just treating it with oxygen then you get alcohol so here i began with two carbon so alcohol also will have two carbon so ethane will give you ethanol whereas if i change the catalyst now if i take molybdenum oxide molybdenum is a transition metal you will find in the uh, periodic table molybdenum oxide will give you aldehyde so you have taken two carbon ethane so we will get ethanol aldehydes are ended with l now if i take a different catalyst altogether manganese acetate then may name may not be known to you you better write down manganese acetate ch3co twice mn mn when you write n should be small m should be capital then we get a higher oxide ethanoic acid so in this reaction you need to be really really careful depending on which catalyst used the products formed will be different this may be asked as conversion also like how do you convert ethane to ethanol how do you convert methane to methanol how do you convert ethane to ethanoic acid so depending on that you have to choose the appropriate catalyst the next reaction is aromatization open chain hydrocarbons having six or more carbon minimum requirement is six it may be having more on heating at high temperature and high pressure in presence of various oxides it may be chromium oxide it may be vanadium oxide v2o5 or it may be molybdenum oxide here i would like to tell you when you write molybdenum make sure that this o is small letter get dehydrogenated what is the meaning of dehydrogenated d means removal dehydrogenated means removal of hydrogen it forms a cyclic compound to form benzene or its homologs so here i have taken the example of hexane having formula c6h14 when you are treating it with chromium oxide or any of the catalyst mentioned above at high pressure and high temperature it forms benzene having molecular formula c6h6 you note the number of carbons remain same only number of hydrogen changed and that is why we call this reaction to be dehydrogenation so with this we come to the end of discussion of alkane the new next topic will be alkane